Hello and good evening. Welcome to Friday Nights, Friday Nights Quiz Nights. And here we are. <laughs> we will just get ourselves set up, wait on everybody to arrive before we begin, before we tell you what's going on. And um, we'll have some fun. We've got a lot of questions coming up, a lot of different ones to last week, different subjects, some mm, same Maybe subjects. a bit easier than last week, I think. Maybe a bit easier. Perhaps. We'll soon find out. Depends if the categories suit you or not. In about an hour's time. <laughs> we will know whether or not it's easier or not. we got some people here, which is cool. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. If you're just arriving, we haven't started yet, don't worry. Get yourself set up. Feel free to send us a comment. Tell us what you're eating, what you're drinking. Still waiting on the most fabulous of team names. <laughs> Uh, we have already had a few messages from people saying they can't make it, so the um, pool has been shortened a little, and uh, oh. so you've, perhaps you've better chances of winning. Welcome to the Renegades, the Frasers, determined to be less dreadful than last week. Oh, no. Cool, no problem at all. And uh, the other McGee's are here, which is great. It's only just turned six o'clock, so you are bang on time. But we'll wait on everybody else to make sure they're here, getting set up before we begin. Make sure you have drinks at the ready, snacks if you need them, tasty treats. What are you eating? Are you eating anything? We're not eating anything because I don't really think you'd want to <laughs> sit there watching us stuff our faces with yeah. snacks. It would take a whole lot longer, wouldn't it? If we could it, only it ask the questions longer. in between eating snacks. Snack, <laughs> snack, snack. But it's Friday. Friday is the day of snacks. Or the first day of snacks. Oh, there's a team name. There's a team name. The Super Curran Fragilistic Expialidocious Team. That's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. Okay, now that's the best team name. Although I get the feeling you've used that before somewhere. Or did you just come up with that on the spot, Stuart? Maybe that's their quiz team name for uh, all quizzes. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Hi, all Harry. And to the Dawson family, welcome along. It's good to have you with us. We'll get started, I don't know, maybe a minute or so. Um, we'll just give it a little bit of time just to make sure everybody's here before we start. I know for a fact that the seven time champions, the Purvises, are not here. They can't make it, so um, the defending champions from last week and previous weeks are not here. So your chances of winning perhaps have just been increased simply by that. But a win's a win, whether you have to beat them or not. Um... We have a little bit of news before we start. Hi, Karen and Alan. Good to have you here. Hope you're ready to rock. First up, news is, as we will have seen in the news with the um, loosening of restrictions, uh, hairdressers will be opening up soon. So this thing here, which actually looks quite tame because I'm not long out to shower, will be going on the 15th or 16th of July. I think I'll length of that nonsense. <laughs> That's gonna, that's gonna go. So yeah, it, there's, <laughs> oh, I've left a bit. Oh no, it's messed up. I can't get it back. Thanks, darling. <laughs> Helpful. Uh, yep, so there's the first bit of news. Hairdressers are opening. whoop de doo I feel like you should warn your guy now. He won't recognise you. He's gonna have to get like the garden hedge trimmer out or something. And <laughs> um, uh, the second bit of news is that this is going to be our third last quiz. Okay. Next week, we'll do the 3rd of July, and the final one, which we'll make extra special, will be on the 10th of July. Reasoning, because the rules are relaxing again, you can go and see your friends and family in their homes, and we can go to restaurants and pubs and stuff, and I would hate for you to have to tell your friends that you can't go and see them, <laughs> or you can't go to your favourite restaurant, because you want You're to see us. With us. Indeed. I don't want you to have to be in that difficult situation where you have to explain that we are more important than your friends or the pub, okay? Which we do genuinely appreciate. I and mean, you have spent a lot of time with us over the past, uh, however long we've been doing this. We'll get those um, we facts for you. Yeah, yeah, we'll work out how many quizzes um, we've done. Today. But yeah, so we've got two more after this. The last one will be on the 10th of July, but enough about the future. Let's move on to the present or move back to the present. I don't know. We'll move to now. Oh, the 10th of July is Isla's birthday. Well, you better get studying. Yeah. And then hopefully you can win on your birthday. And it'll be a marvellous treat. <laughs> or you can win tonight and just carry it forward for a couple of weeks. Okay, teams, are we ready to rock and roll? 
pen and paper at the ready. I will ask you the questions. You write down the answers. When we get to each round, mark yourselves out of note. We'll do that when I get to the answers. You'd have thought I'd know what I'm doing by now, but I really don't in general or quizzing. So first category is supposedly general knowledge. Okay. But that does depend on how general one's knowledge may be. First question. Um, I, I got this question from a, a quiz website earlier today and I didn't know the answer, but Susie knew the answer. I actually did a quick fire round with Susie today and she got 34 out of 54. Uh, that was a team of her own in a three and a half minute quick fire, don't think about it, just answer kind of quiz. So I think she did pretty well. So First score down. First score down, um, that's your benchmark to beat, 34. <laughs> Let's get started. First question, what UK TV soap does Ken Barlow feature in and what is the actor called? So Ken Barlow is a character in a TV show. What is the name of the TV show and who plays Ken Barlow? What is his or her name? Ken Barlow. I think it's just coincidence. I don't think he's related to Gaza. <laughs> No. no, he's not. Take that s s tribute act on a Friday night down the pub. I can't bother. So we want the name of the show that Ken Barlow is in, the character and the actor who plays Ken Barlow in said TV programme. Cool, two points there. So it could be off to a good start if you watch TV. If you don't... Did you really say? I always said it. I always said it. But I didn't. I didn't. I'm getting there. Question two. Koala bears survive on a diet of which type of leaf? Or what type of leaf from which tree? Which leaf from which tree? What kind of tree is it that they mostly eat the leaves of? That's what I'm looking for. Koala bears eat the leaves of what kind of tree? If you could tell me. They're cute and cuddly little things. I don't know, I think I've even seen one actually. Do they have them in Edinburgh Zoo? Mm, it's been a long time since I've been to Edinburgh Zoo. I can't remember. This is true. Got that one? Easy peasy. Well, let's move on to question number three. What is the longest motorway in the United Kingdom? And for a bonus point, can you tell me how long it is within 10 miles? So 10 miles either side, you will get your bonus points. So if it's... 100 miles long and you say 109, then you still get your point. If you say 111, nil point. So what is the longest motorway in the UK and how long would it be? Please write down two answers because that is worth two points. Next up's a biggie. The first big question of the day. It is worth six points. I'm looking for six names or six characters. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, can you name the original six Avengers from the movies, not from the comic books? Because, as I found out today, <laughs> the original six differs from original comic books to the more recent movies. So, the Avengers movies, what is no who are known as the original six Avengers? And this is their character names. Yes. Not... Their act, not their actor names, not the names in, in real life. Correct. Their character names in the Avengers. And just to show you what a super duper fan Susie is, she got these in a quick as a flash, six <laughs> points, boom. I do like a Marvel movie. We did go through all I of them like from start to finish. At the start of lockdown. At the start of lockdown. <laughs> uh, we thought it would take us the whole of lockdown. Something? It didn't take us very long. <laughs> but it was good fun. So all six of the original... Avengers from the movie series. Cool. Their full names. Actor. Uh, uh, character names. Character names. Don't know the actor or actress. Just to confuse you. Okay, last question. In general knowledge, which chess piece cannot move in a straight line? Which chess piece cannot move in a straight line? 
And for an imaginary bonus point, how many different chess pieces are there? I don't know. I don't play chess all that often. Do you want to make that a bonus question? You have to, no. I'll Google the answer. That... How many chess pieces on a chess board? No, how many different chess pieces are there? Okay. Bonus point. How many different chess pieces are there? We're just gonna... Yeah, like the different types. You different mean. types. Okay. We're just going to Google the answer. Just, you know, making things up as we go along. On the fly. I so like which chess piece cannot move in a straight line? And how many different chess pieces are there? We have the answer. Because we're super duper smart. And we know how to use Google. <laughs> we are allowed to use Google. You're not. So I need to update that score. And update that And it wouldn't, have it wouldn't have changed my score from earlier because I didn't know the answer. So. Cool. Yeah. Well done. Good job. So that is the end of the general knowledge around. Good job. Make sure you've got an answer in each. If you don't have an answer, scribble down the question of some sort and just mull it over. Um, otherwise, if you forgot what the question was, we'll go over it again when we read out the answers real quick. But next up, we're going to move on to geography. First question is multiple choice, A, B, or C. So unless you are 100% confident in the answer, I would suggest you wait until I read out <laughs> all the options. All the options. <laughs> what is the biggest state in the USA? The United States of America, which is the biggest state? Is it A, California, B, Texas, or C, Alaska. Now, these are the three biggest states in America. Which of these three is the biggest? California, Texas, or Alaska? You tell me. I know the answer because it's written down right there. <laughs> and we've got a fun fact to go with it, but I will wait until the end because that will give away the answer. Cool. A, B, or C. Write it down and we'll move swiftly on to question Number two, staying in that part of the world, North America, uh, what is the national emblem of Canada? What is the national emblem, em em emblem? That's such a weird word. Symbol. I'm going go for symbol. <laughs> em it? Emblem is a emblem. word. Emblem. Yeah. Emblem. S sounds weird. <laughs> what is the national symbol of Canada? <laughs> Please write it down. Emblem. <laughs> Who made up that word? There like, are words that when you say them too many times or too often, they start to sound weird and then you doubt yourself. Like when you write it out, you're like, that's not how you spell it. And then... Yeah, that's yep. weird. Anyway, what is the national symbol of Canada? Write it down. And moving on to question number three of the geography round, a little bit closer to home. Where in London is there a bronze statue of Charlie Chaplin? Where in London is there a bronze statue of Charlie Chaplin? It's quite a specific location. I didn't know the answer. I also don't know why I had to say bronze. I could have just said statue. Because <laughs> I don't imagine there's that many statues of Charlie Chaplin kicking about. Maybe there is. Maybe. Maybe. So specifically the bronze one. <laughs> specifically this bronze one that I have written down. <laughs> Not if, made from any other material. <laughs> if, if, there, if you know of a second one, we will have to corroborate your answer with the internet. <laughs> okay, question four. Also multiple choice, so please wait until the all options have been read. What is the national fruit of India? Is it A, mango, B, apricot, or C, lychee? Have you ever had lychee before? Kind of weird little things. Um, yeah, they've got like kind of spiky... You peel yeah. off like the spiky shell. They really don't look and like they, you should be eating them. They look like eyeballs. <laughs> no? Yeah. What do your eyeballs look like? <laughs> like lychees. <laughs> uh, and what's, what's the Scottish national fruit? Anybody know? Do we have a national fruit? We don't have... Is that haggis? I am brewed. <laughs> we do not have a national fruit. Come on. What is the national fruit of India? Is it mango, apricot, or lychee? 
Lychee is not a type of cheese. Actually, raspberries grow pretty well here. Raspberries. This is true. A, B, or C for the, ma the, f the, the, the national fruit of India. And then we'll move on to the last question. Where does Manchego cheese come from? It's such a cool name. I do like the taste of it, but I also just like it because it's got a cool name. I really like the taste of it. I, I, I don't think this is just me that thinks this, but if you give something a nice sounding name, it's much more appealing than something that's not. Would well, you think it tastes nicer because you like the name? I think subconsciously hmm. you're you're more enthusiastic of it because you have a better appeal of it. Manchego. You know, lychee does not sound doesn't sound good. Manchego <laughs> sounds cool. It's a good name. Right, so that's the end of the geography rounds. It's a good name for a dog. What Manchego? Yeah. <laughs> Here, Manchego, come on, <laughs> go fetch. <laughs> Round three, history. First question, tough one. Just plucked out of the internet. If you know the answer, you know your history. Which country was the first to give women the right to vote in 1893? Which country was the first to give women the right to vote in 1893. 1893, that was a while ago. Cool, easy. Well then we'll move on to question number two. Elizabeth, Susie's gonna write down question number five in the comment section. <coughs> question two of history, more recent history. How long does it something have, how long ago does something have to have taken place for it to be history? Yesterday? Is yesterday technically history? Um, yeah. Yeah? It's, it's in the past. Okay. Name the past four Prime Ministers of the UK. Past being not the current fellow who's down in London. The previous four Prime Ministers of the UK. One point per person. First name and last name, please. It's a good chance to get back in the game if you didn't do so well in the geography rounds. Geography round was only worth five points. That question alone is worth four. So if your oh, yeah. politics are good, your food is not, or your geography is not, then this is your chance to get, play catch up. So it's not including Bojo. No, it's not including Boris Previous Johnson. four names. Previous four. Full names. Start to finish. First and last. <laughs> Middle names not required. Question three. Back down to London we go. What creature guards Nelson's column? What creature guards Nelson's column? And for a bonus point, can you tell me Nelson's first name? Because he's not called Nelson Muntz. That's the guy from The Simpsons. <laughs> And he's not called Lord Nelson, as Susie suggested earlier. <laughs> he has a first name. So if you could give me that name and it is correct, you will get one bonus point. If you can also tell me what creature guards his column, I would also appreciate that. One point for the correct answer. Okay, Elizabeth, this question is just for you. Since you're uh, such a fan. Uh, yeah, do you know what the hilarious thing is, though? You'll probably know is the you'll answer. Get, you'll get this. Like... Yeah, yeah. Because it's not really about the contents of the story. Yeah, carry on. Thanks. It's easy. Easy like a Sunday morning. In what year <laughs> was the first Harry Potter book released in the UK? What was it called? And what was it called in the US? So there's three questions there. I want three answers for a maximum of three points. In what year was the first Harry Potter book released in the UK? What was it called? And what was it called in the US of A? Because they're a little different to us, so they fancied a different name. Cool. Just for you, Elizabeth. 
I expect full marks. Let's move on to the last question of round number three. And this will take us up to halfway. Where did the Great Fire of London begin on the 2nd of September 1666? The Great Fire of London, where did it start? On 2nd of September 1666. Just realised I could have made that a double question, when and where, but oh, yeah. I only realised that after I'd said the date. Oh, never mind. So, never mind. Where did it start? Did anybody honestly know the start, the date of the Great London of Fire? <laughs> Great Fire of London. Um, where did it start? If you knew when it was, give yourself a high five. Well done, team. That is the end of the history round. And that takes us up to the halfway mark. And that brings us on to our next, our first interactive Ooh. round. We're going to do book covers again. It's been a while, hasn't it? It has been a yeah. while. We did famous people last week and the week before, I think. And we've done movie covers. We've done movie covers, but we've done book covers. And I only just realised, just before the start of the quiz, that I should have done them all in the other direction to make it bigger on the screen. But I ran out. I didn't have enough time to correct my mistake, so it should hopefully be big enough that I could have made it. Bigger. I see what you mean. Yeah, portrait. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't, so That's we'll just okay. have to suffer. So there are. I will reply. Let's say I'll reply Susie, to Susie will reply in the comments section. But keep your eyes peeled on the screen for the next book. So we have five books coming up, okay? And I would like the name of the book, the title of the book, the author. I'll go through it one by one because the rules are slightly different for each book, okay? So this is book number one. Can you see it? I haven't read it. This is, I did my best to try and pick non-black ones, but it's challenging. It's black just seems to reflect the most off of the TV screen. So this lovely book right here, what is it called? Who is it by? And for a bonus point, who illustrated it? Whoa. So three points available there for that book. I'll hold it up a little bit longer. What's it called? Who wrote it? And for a bonus point, who illustrated it? Cool? Yeah? We got that one? Well, then let's move on to number two. Hopefully this is a little bit clearer on the screen. Do you see what I mean? I should have gone and made them all portrait instead of in this direction, you know, because they're all squeezed on the screen. But I try. it doesn't rotate. I've tried. I promise. What is this book called? And who wrote it? Can you tell me? I'll hold it up a little longer. There's no rush. What is the book called and who wrote it? Cool. Let's move on to book number three. Now, this is a slightly different one. The cover of this book had about 17,000 million, 100,000 different ver versions. So I couldn't pick one. So I picked the movie cover because it has recently become a movie. Okay. So this is kind of half book, half movie. They're both called the same. I would like the title of the book slash movie. I would like the author of the book. I would like the actor who is on this poster I'm about to show you and the name of the other object in the photo. <laughs> It'll make sense real soon. Okay, so there is the movie poster for a recent movie about a book. What is the book called and who wrote the book? Who is that man in the picture? And what is the name of the dog in the book and the movie? So four points available there. It's not super duper easy. You don't necessarily have to have seen the movie poster. Maybe you can make the connection just because of the man and the dog. That was what we did a few weeks ago, the old man in the sea. This is the new man and the dog. What is the book called? Who wrote the book? Who is that man? And what is the name of the dog? Cool? Well done. Book number four. Maybe a little bit easier. Maybe not. You tell me. Who is this? Definitely the most recent. Definitely the most recent. It's only last year, I think, this book came out. Maybe 2018, but I think it was last year. What is this called? 
What is this book called? And who is it by? I'll give you a hint. The author is staring you in the face. So who is that lovely lady? And what is the title of the book? The title of the book is just above her head, but I have blocked it out so that you can't see it. So if you could tell me, that would be wonderful. And we'll move on to the last question. The last book cover. It's quite tricky. It's quite tricky. There's not much to go on. There's not much. That, that's it. That's all you get. What is this book called and who wrote it? Now, if you only know what it's called or you want to just take a guess at what it might be called, go for it. If you don't know who's written by, take a stab in the dark because as we always say, take a guess. If you're ever a mastermind, don't pass. Okay, so those are all of our books. I hope you got them. I hope you understood what we were looking for in each of the uh, questions, each of the books. We will go through them again before we do the answers, just to re-clarify everything uh, before we go through it. Um, but that's the end of the book covers round. There are a total of 13 points available there, so make sure you have 13 somethings written down. <laughs> names. 13 guesses will be fine. 13 guesses will do fine. And we'll move on to sport. Which I think got a little bit tough this week. Um, I think Susie only got... That was my worst round, wasn't it? Susie's worst round. She's quite a sporty one too. Yikes. But it's only out of five, so <laughs> if you blow it, it's, it might not cost you the game. If you blow the books, maybe it did cost you the game. But we'll see. Maybe you've got every other question right. Maybe you didn't. We'll just have to wait and find out. So, sports. We're going to start with tennis. And the first question is... Multiple choice, A or B. Who has won more Grand Slams? Roger Federer or Serena Williams? Who has won more Grand Slams? Roger Federer or Serena Williams? Cool. A or B. Take a guess. If you don't know for sure, 50-50 chance you're getting it right. Let's move on. The Olympic torch is lit at which ancient site in Greece? So the Olympic torch that they do the relay with before, uh, before the Olympics, and then they run it all the way to wherever the host city is, and then they light the Olympic torch that's on for the whole time. Um, where is it lit? What ancient site in Greece? If you can please tell me the name of that ancient site, that would be marvelous. And then we'll move on. And we're going to go back to tennis. And we're going to go back to a multiple choice. And this may be better for some people than it is for others. I could be said about every question. In there it could be said about... <laughs> I, I was going to go somewhere with that. I changed my mind, so I just generalised the answer. The ending. Who won the men's singles final at Wimbledon in 2001? 11 years after his first entrance to the championship. Was it A, Goran Ivanisevic? P, Pat, P, Bat Rafter. B, Pat Rafter. <laughs> I, got the, I got the hard one, right? I can't even say Pat. <laughs> B, Pat Rafter, or C, Pete Sampras. Goran Ivanisevic, Pat Rafter, or Pete Sampras. Who won the men's single final at Dump Wimbledon in 2001, 11 years after the first time they played it? Cool. A, B, or C? Don't make me say it again. Please. <laughs> Joe, this one's for you. Since it was your birthday yesterday, you can almost have this as a freebie. And Dad will be proud that I got this one right. And Susie, <laughs> Susie got this just... This was, this was one of the two I got. This was one of the two. <laughs> Which South African golfer is known as the Big Easy? Which South African golfer is known as the Big Easy? Now that I think about it, I'm not really sure how I'd feel about having that as my nickname. In some respects, it sounds kind of cool. Like, that guy's Big Easy, but at the same time... Is it not to do with... I know, I know, but at the same time, <laughs> the big easy. 
you know. Sounds like you're overweight and don't put up a fight. <laughs> I don't think it is that big. No. No, at all. It's just, it's just a strange... Jo maybe Joe can tell us where it came from. What South African golfer is known as the Big Easy? That could be a fun fact after. That could be a fun fact. Last question is another multiple choice question. Sometimes I think I'm too nice, you know? I mean, you all say they're really hard and then I give you multiple choice. All you can do is say B or C. Maybe it's just still too hard though. Um, which female athlete has won the most Olympic gold medals? Is it A, Laura Kenny, B, Catherine Granger, or C, Lizzie Yarnold? A, B, or C, which female athlete has won the most Olympic gold medals? Laura Kenny, Catherine Granger, or Lizzie Yarnold? Cool. That is out of five. So make sure you have five answers written down. And we will move on to the final round of the day, which I have called Arts. <laughs> Although, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's more like music and film. Oh, there's a book in there and it's, TV. It's more like entertainment again, but mm. last week was called entertainment and it was more about like celebrities and nonsense. So I've called it Arts, but after maybe... No, 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 I don't it's think it's not as cultured as it's not as cultured as it art. sounds. Yeah, as art. FYI, Ian's not as cultured as it sounds. <laughs> as he sounds. I can talk the talk. I can't walk the walk. Where is the love? Was the first number one song for which band group collective? Where is the love? That's what it's called. And what band collective group? What was it, uh, who, who was that song by? If you could please tell me, that'd be wonderful. Where is the love? It's a little bit old, don't know how old. 10, 15? 2001? 20 years? I'm gonna say 2001, maybe. Where is the love? Was the first number one for which group? Oh, 2003. 2003. Thanks, Richard. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, that was clearly arts, wasn't it? <laughs> Question two, following on the arts theme. In the film Monsters, Inc., what is Sully's full name? Hmm. Also very arts. In the film Monsters, Inc., what is Sully's full name? Cool. Good job. I don't know why I called it arts. It's definitely not arts. <laughs> Monsters Inc. Monsters Inc. And, and The Simpsons. Next question is about The Simpsons. Please name the cat and the dog belonging to the Simpsons family. <laughs> the cat and the dog. They have a pet cat and a pet, pet dog. Please name the cat and the dog that belong to The Simpsons. My brother-in-law, uh, Canadian brother-in-law, is quite the Simpsons fan. If he were here, he would probably laugh at how easy that question was. But we all have our strong points. We all have our weaker points. His strong point, one of his strong points, not his only strong point, is, is Simpsons knowledge. The name of the cat and the dog, please. And then we'll move on to question four, which is another two-answer question. If you only know one, fine, just put down one because it'll be worth one point. Which two cities provide the setting for Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities? Which two cities are the two cities in The Tale of Two Cities? As written by Charles Dickens in his book, A Tale of Two Cities. Yeah, did I say that enough times? Two, two cities? Yep. Yep, you got it? Do you know what? Susie got one. And as and always, the second one on the second, second guess. Second guess, third guess, yeah. second guess. Don't just write down five cities <laughs> and score out the wrong three. That doesn't count. That's cheating. Just write down two. Just write down two and preferably the correct two. And this is it, team. The last question. This was for Paul. And Paul's not here. <laughs> Text me at five, six so that Ian can't make it. And I'd run out of time, couldn't change the question. So here we go, just for you, Paul. 
In Friends, what is the coffee shop called and who runs it? In Friends, what is the coffee shop called and who runs it? Two questions, two answers, please. And that brings us to the end of the arts round, which is worth eight points. So mark, no, don't mark yourselves out of eight because I haven't given you the answers yet. Make sure you've got eight things written down. Even if you have to guess something, have, Write eight, it down. An have eight answers. Yep. Definitely. Yep, yep. Well done. That's us at the end. We're going to go back to the top. We're going to go through all of the questions again. I'll give you a little bit of time to just to make sure you've got the right answer down or a answer written down. And then I'll tell you the answer. At the end of each round, mark yourselves out of the score just to make it easy maths when we come to the end. Are we ready for some answers? Susie's just double checking some of my answers. Before. No, it was so I could say oh, okay. or like read them out and say what they I are. See. I see. She's ready. She's, she's clever. First up, what UK TV soap does Ken Barlow feature in? And what is the actor who plays Ken Barlow? What's he called? So I can tell you, because I watch it on a daily basis, that the TV soap that Ken Barlow is in is Coronation Street. And the actor who plays Ken Barlow on Coronation Street... For one point, if you knew it, was William Roach. Who knew that? Who's a Coronation Street fan? <laughs> Anybody? You don't have to admit it if you don't want to. But take yourself a well-earned point if you knew William Roach. Well done. Question two. Koala bears, which I think Joe has cuddled before, although Elizabeth said it, but I don't think it was your mum. Yeah, no, it was a comment from Dad to say he's... Cuddled a koala bear. Australian, cuddled a koala bear. And I wonder if it's Joel cute. also got a little taste of what they eat. Because koala bears survive on a diet of what leaf? From what tree? And that is a mm -hmm. eucalyptus tree. Which I think makes them a little bit high. Which is why they're, some di why they're so sedate. A wee bit sleepy. A wee bit um, relaxed. Fall out of trees and nonsense. Don't do drugs, kids. Don't do drugs. Or bears. Or bears. Koala bears eat eucalyptus plants. Give yourself one point if you said eucalyptus. Question three. What is the longest motorway in the UK? And how long is it to the nearest 10 miles? Within, within 10 miles either way. The longest motorway in the UK is not in Scotland, obviously. It is the M6. The M6 is 236 miles long. So if you said anywhere between 226 and 246, give yourself one point. If you said 225 or 247, that is not within 10 each of side. So that is no points. But well done in giving a very close answer. I take no prisoners. I guess 10 either way is actually a window of 20, miles. 20 so, okay. Yeah. And imagine, you, imagine you're driving somewhere, right? I'm going to go there and, oh no, wait, I've overshot it by 20 miles. You, 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 you're you're kind of not there, are you? So I feel I should give myself a hard time for not just 236 on the button, but no. Anywhere between 226 and 246, you can have one point and M6 for another point. Now, the first big one of the day. Name the original six Avengers from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Susie got them all right. Would you care to share? Sure. They are... She rattled them off so fast. It was Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, Black Widow, Hawkeye, and the Hulk. Well done. A point apiece. Six points in total. I didn't see the full original six, but Ant-Man was one of the original six. So this is the... In the comics? In the comics. Oh, okay. So this is the original six from the movies that we're looking for. One point apiece. Very well done if you got all six. Hopefully you guessed at least six character names. Just on the off chance you might have got it right if you didn't know it at all. If you don't know six Marvel characters, then you're missing out. 
Go back to the start, watch Iron Man, and then the rest of them. Well done. Last question, which has an added bonus question. Which chess piece cannot move in a straight line? And for a bonus point, how many different chess pieces are there? I can tell you the piece that cannot move in a straight line is the knight. And there are six different chess pieces. I'm going to hand you over to Richard <laughs> to tell you what those six different pieces are. They are pawns, rooks, knights, bishops, queen, and king. Oh, and controversially... I am not reading this up. I'm not making this up. This is what it says right there. It says pawns, rooks, knights, bishops, a queen, and the most important one, the king. Whew! That person should be running for their lives. This website needs to. That needs to. Take one. Whew. Get one. I don't there think old go. Queenie down the road would be too chuffed about that, um, eh? Also, I just realised that if people have never seen Pointless before, they yes. won't understand why you're calling me Richard. There's a BBC quiz show called Pointless, and it's hosted by Alexander Armstrong, moi, and Richard... Osmond? Osmond. Who's like the guy that does the answers, and he always has his computer on, and his glasses, <laughs> and, and uh, checks the facts and gives... Anyway, I'm Richard. You're Alexander. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. But we're not nearly as condescending as... Jeremy Paxman in University Challenge when he reads out the answer when the team have got it wrong and he's like don't be stupid it's obviously blah 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 well, written on my how did you not know that <laughs> I knew it <laughs> no you didn't you got it wrong <laughs> cool so that's first round done 13 points available there so mark yourselves out of 13 if you said 6 for the different number of chess pieces well done you're a chess master mark yourselves out of 13 and let's move swiftly on to geography. A, B, or C for the first question. What is the biggest state in the United States of America? A, California. B, Texas. Or C, Alaska. These are the three biggest states in America. I wanted you to pick the biggest one. California, Texas, or Alaska? Well... I can tell you the biggest is Alaska with a surface area of 1.7 million square kilometers which is more than double second biggest of Texas which is just under 700,000 square kilometers and California is third with just over 400,000 square kilometers so if you said Alaska if you said C very well done. One point to yourselves. And if there was anywhere in America to be right now, it would probably be Alaska. <laughs> because we were looking at it earlier. I think there's, oh, there's one person per, per every square kilometre? Is that what you said? Um, square mile. The population is one person per square mile. Yeah, so, so screw, screw your two metres. I get a whole square mile. <laughs> get away. Get out my square. <laughs> Get in my square mile. Alaska. One point. Well done. Question two. What is the national emblem of Canada? The national emblem is a maple leaf. A leaf from the maple tree, which is obviously where we get maple syrup from. Flom. From. Which tastes real good. I like it. Maple leaf for question two. One point for maple leaf. Well done. Question three, where in London is there a bronze statue of Charlie Chuck Chaplin? I wonder if anybody called him Chuck. If that was just me. Say like I knew him. Didn't was know. that not, did you just make that up right there? Yep. Chuck Chaplin. Charlie, well Chuck's short for Charlie. Yeah, no, but anyway. Anyway, the bronze statue of Chuck Chaplin is in Leicester Square. Now, if you know any other statues in London of Charlie Chaplin, please do let me know. We will check the answer and we may award you a point for it. But the answer I was looking for is Leicester Square. If you said Leicester Square, well done. And let's move quickly on to question number four. <coughs> Which was, what is the national fruit of India? A. Mango 
B, apricot, or C, lychee. All three of these do come from India, amongst many other fruits. Um, I picked the first two because I like them, and I picked the last one because it sounds weird. And it tastes weird. And it is weird. But the correct answer is mango. The national fruit of India is mango. And nobody commented when I asked what the national fruit of Scotland was, so I'm just going to assume, like me, nobody knows. And there probably isn't there one. There isn't one. Surely. <laughs> we're not we're not, not known for not our enough. not known for our fruits and vegetable making Intake. or growing never mind eating um which is funny because we were talking about vitamin supplements the other day or supplements in general moving on last question where does manchego cheese come from here manchego come on hmm. come fetch your cheese well there's a dog along the road called nacho which there is, is cool. there is a dog along the road called nacho so Manchego, you could get two dogs and call one Nacho and one Manchego. What do you call cheese that's not yours? Nacho cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. There's lots of bad jokes. Lots of them. <laughs> that's the end of the geography round. Out of five points. Did you say where it came from? Did I? I don't know if I did. It comes from Spain. Spain. <laughs> Spain. I got carried away with bad jokes. Spain. Spain. Manchego cheese comes from Spain. I'm glad somebody's paying attention. That's the end of the food round. I out of five points. <laughs> it was a geography round. But... What food <laughs> round? <laughs> oh, so it was geography, geography round. The end of the geography round. But there was round. a lot of food in it. There was, there was a lot of food. Right. There was more food than there was geography. History. <coughs> Mark yourselves out of five for the food slash geography. And we'll move on to history. The first question. <coughs> Sorry. Got a little cough. Let's start that again. Which country was the first to give women the right to vote in 1893? Well, the first country to give women the right to vote in 1893 was New Zealand. If you said New Zealand, give yourself one point. Well done. Question four. This was a big score. Four points available here. I don't know why she's laughing. Have a Question two. Question two. What? <laughs> I'm losing it. I'm losing it. <laughs> Question two. <laughs> I said four. Because you read because four. Because I read Name four. Name the past four UK prime ministers. Indeed. Maybe we should just let Susie What's do this. What's the question? Name the blast, blast, four UK prime ministers. <laughs> there are four people. One point per person. Um, the first most recent Prime Minister since Boris Johnson is Theresa May so one point for Theresa May before that was David Cameron one point for David Cameron before that we had Gordon Brown one point for Gordon Brown and last but not least before that we had Tony Blair one point for Tony Blair so four points available there. Well done if you said all four. That could have brought you back into the game. Well done. Uh, Morag, Susie has just written down the answer to question or the question answer to question one, uh, in case you missed it. Anybody else who missed it, the answer to question none is on the screen. Uh, we will move on to question three, which is about Nelson and Nelson's column and which creatures guard Nelson's com column. And for a bonus point, what was Nelson's first name? Well, I can tell you that there are four lions around the base of Nelson's column. And for a bonus point, Nelson, his first name was Horatio. Horatio Nelson, which is kind of cool. If you said Horatio Nelson at one point, if you said Lord Nelson, no point. <laughs> If you came up with another wild name, well done, but it's wrong. Mark yourselves out of two for that one. Make sure you got two points if you got it both right. And then we'll move on to Elizabeth's question, which was worth three points. In what year was the first Harry Potter book released in the UK? What was it called? And what was it called in the USA? 
Well, I can tell you the first Harry Potter book was released in the UK in 1997. It wasn't released in the US until 98, which is why I specified in the question, just in case we have any super fans out there who knew both answers. So in the UK, it was released in 1997. One point for 97. It is called Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. And I need the full name, please. <laughs> One point for Philosopher's Stone. And slightly more tricky. What was it called in the USA? Because they just have to be a little bit different. It was called Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. So well done if you said 1997, Philosopher's Stone and Sorcerer's Stone. Three points available there. Good job. Last question in history. Where did the Great Fire of London begin? On the 2nd of September, 1666. Well, unfortunately, it would have smelt very good for the first little bit because it started in a bakery. I didn't know his name, but I think it was also on Pudding Lane. Did I read that right? Pudding Lane? Anyway, it was a bakery. Bakery is what we were looking for. If you went more specific than that, well done. Um, we were just looking for bakery. And that's all we've got. Cool. Yes, it was on Pudding Lane and it belonged to Thomas Farner. Just for added bonus. That's halfway. So, mark yourselves out of 11 for the history rounds and we'll move on to the books again. I will go through them quickly just to show you what we're looking for one more time and then I'll go through the answers. So they're going to get all of the books covered up first and then all of the answers. So this is the first book. What is it called? Who is it by? And for a bonus point, if you're super knowledgeable, who illustrated it? So three points available for that one. So three answers there. Then, oh, wrong way. Then there is this book. Who wrote this book and what is it called? And then there is this one, which is a bit different. So this is the movie poster for an old, well-known book. What was the book and this movie called? Who wrote the book? Who is that old fellow? And what was the name of the dog in the book? And what I can only assume is also the name of the dog in the movie. So four answers we're looking for there. Then we've got book number four. Who uh, wrote this book? A, also, who is that person? Same answer. And what is the name of the book? Okay, perhaps the author is quite easy, but the main name might be a little bit tough. If you don't know it, it'll be very tough. Last one. What is this? Who wrote this book and what is this book called? Cool. We're ready for the answers. Well, this is the first book. It is The Gruffalo, which was written by Julia Donaldson and written, uh, illustrated by Alex Schiffler. One point for the Gruffalo, one point for Julia Donaldson, and one point for Alex Schiffler. Very well done, if you said... Axel. Axel, what did I say? Alex. It's quite far away. My, my left contact lens has gone a bit blurry as well. Uh, so Axel Schiffler. I thought I said Alex. Book number two was The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Well done if you said that. Give yourself two points. One for Mark Twain, one for Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Good job. Okay, here we go. This was the tough one. A little bit different. It's Call of the Wild by Jack London. So one point for Call of the Wild, one point for Jack London. And in the movie, the dude in the movie uh, is played by Harrison Ford and the dog is called Buck. I think. Yeah, just checking. So one point for Call of Wild, one point for Jack London, one point for Harrison Ford, and one point for Buck. And then we came on to this book by this rather famous lady, Michelle Obama, and the book's called Becoming. I've not read it. Have you read it? Uh, I have started the audiobook. She's started the audiobook. Anybody else read it? I've not read it. Last book, Game of Thrones by George R.R. R. Martin. Well done if you said that. 
So that round was worth a total of 13 points. So please what? mark yourselves out of 13. If you got them all right, that's a big, big scoring round. Big chunk. Points. I read the first Game of Thrones book. It melted my brain. It was just... I, I think I think my Elizabeth, my mother-in-law, told me once that Agatha Christie only has seven characters. Like seven different characters. Because that's or like your brain can only keep a track of seven, of seven. so there's like nine or eleven. Or George R. R. Martin clearly heard that and he was like, no way. I'll make, I'll make 50. I'll make 17,000 people <laughs> with really difficult names. Nobody will remember. Just to really annoy people. <laughs> he succeeded. I never read the second book because of that. So that's the end of the book covers. Out of 13, well done if you got 13 points there. Let's move on to sp sports. We ready? The first sporting question, tennis. Who has won more Grand Slams, Roger Federer or Serena Williams? I can tell you that with 23 Grand Slam wins is Serena Williams, while Roger Federer trails with only a measly 20. Still pretty impressive. Serena Williams, one point. Question two, the Olympic torch is lit at which ancient site in Greece? Well, the answer is kind of in the question. The ancient site is called Olympia. If you said Olympia, well done. One point. Good job. Question number three. Who won the men's singles final at Wimbledon in 2001, 11 years after he first played in the championship? Was it A. Goran Ivanisevic, B. Pat Rafter, or C. Pete Sampras. The answer is A. Goran Ivanisevic. Well done if you said that. Susie, did you, you remember watching that? I remember the year. I remember watching that final because I'm pretty sure that year, 2001, that Goran Ivanisevic got in and he won. He got in as a wild card. So, like, he won it on the year that he got in as a wild card. I'm sure of it. I would have been like 11 or something. I don't even remember who won last year's. Susie remembers when we were 11. I'd, yeah. Because it was a big thing because they didn't think, obviously, oh, a wild card, they didn't think he'd get to the final. I'm sure. I can Google it. Richard's going to Google it first. Question three. Question four. Which South African golfer is known as the Big Easy? And that is Ernie Els. And the fun fact that Susie found out when she Googled it is that his first name is actually Theodore. Um, yes, uh, so going back to the previous question, Goran Ivanisevic Goran Ivanisevic did beat Pat Rafter. Pat Rafter came second. That's why I put that in as a choice to try and make it a little bit tough. Goran Ivanisevic is the only person to win the men's single title at Wimbledon as a wild card. Look at that. Susie remembers it. That was good. And Catherine remembers because <laughs> Isla was born two days later. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Fun fact, all, way to, all day around. Last question. Which female athlete has won the most Olympic gold medals? Was it A, Laura Kenny, B, Catherine Granger, or C, Lizzie Yarnold? The answer is Laura Kenny with an almighty four gold medals. However, Catherine Granger does actually have four, uh, have more medals overall, but only one gold. I think she's got three silvers and one bronze as well. And Lizzie Arnold has two gold medals in the... Um, the one where you go down on skeleton your... Skeleton or the tea tray thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, which looks pretty scary. So well done if you said Laura Kenny for that. That was out of five that round. Uh, so not a massive scoring round, but it could be enough to see you through to the final. Last, I don't know why I said the final. There's no final. What are we talking about? 
if you got all five, you're in a better place for winning than you were if you didn't get them all. But there's no final. This is not a qualifier. <laughs> I think I was in sports mode. I was imagining myself on a tea tray running down a very slippery slope trying to qualify. What was the last round? Last round was called Arts. Arts. It involved it involves Friends and Monsters Inc. Friends, Monsters Inc and The Simpsons. <laughs> it's the kind of arts that I like. <laughs> Where is the love was the first number one song for which group, artist, collective? By the Black Eyed Peas from the year 2003, as we found out earlier. Yeah. So if you said Black Eyed Peas, one point. Good job. I also think Justin Timberlake was in that song, no? Susie also thinks that Justin Timberlake was in that song. But you don't need to have written that down, it's fine. Indeed, Black Eyed Peas would have done fine, but we will just clarify whether or not JT was in it. Do you know his phone number? Give him a call. Uh, yeah. Yes, it was featuring Justin Timberlake. Yep. So, that's good news. Question two. In the film Monsters, Inc., what was Sully's full name? Sully's full name was James P. Sullivan. Or James Sullivan, what did you find? The P is optional, but if you said James P. Sullivan... One point with a high five. If you said James Sullivan, one point with a fist bump. Question three. Please name the cat and the dog in that belongs to the Simpsons family. Well, the dog, I can tell you, is called Santa's Little Helper. <laughs> Susie got that right. And the cat is called Snowball. Now, if Barry was here, he'd probably correct me for being slightly wrong, but they, they did go through a few snowballs, not going to lie. Um, I think they're actually on version number five. Um, but if you said snowball, we'll take it. If you said snowball one to five, you can also have the correct point. Um, but we were looking for Santa's little helper and snowball. Well done. Question four. Which two cities provide the setting for Charles Dickens' book, a Tale of Two Cities. The two cities that are in the book, A Tale of Two Cities, are the cities of London and Paris. If you said London and Paris, give yourself two points. One point for London, one point for Paris. Final question of this week. In Friends, what is the coffee shop called and who runs it? The coffee shop is called Central Park, and this is run by Gunther. One point for Central Park, one point for Gunther. And that is out of eight points, so please mark yourselves out of eight. Then add up all your scores, give yourselves a mark out of 55, and tell us your score in the comments. The current high benchmark yeah. is by Susie right here with 34. So that will get beat. That will get beat. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe not. Don't count your charms until they're charmed. Chickens before they've hatched. Chickens before they've hatched. Which is a bit grim, to be honest. Um, so yes, quick as a flash, count up your numbers. Make sure they are right before you put in your score. 41. 41 is the current lead for the Baileys. Oh, oh the Frasers trumped it with a 46. 46. Well done. 34. Oh, you drew, you, you drew with, oh, yeah. with Lucy. Uh, well done, Lucy Margaret, 34. Well done, Morag, for 30. That's not bad. That's not Good. bad. Renegade's got 41. Good job. He tied with the Baileys. Well done. 42 for the current, the super current, fragile elastic, XP Alice, Stocious. <laughs> well done Very there. Good. good job. 35 for Karen and Alan. 35 for Karen and Alan. Well done. Well you, done. You beat Susie. If we haven't said your name and your score and you've already written it down, feel free to write it again. Just to make sure um, we have everybody. The current leader is with 46. Are the freezers still waiting on a couple of scores to come in? If we haven't said your name, 40 from the Dawsons. Good work. 
That's a good score. Well done. 40 out of 55. I think I gave you a solid B. I'd even mm. give you a B plus. What, what about the other McGee's? What about the other McGee's? Apart from that, I think we I might have everybody. have everybody. I think we're waiting on one last score. If we haven't said your name and your score out loud yet, please just type it in again. If you would like your score read out again, and we already have read it out, just type it in again for good luck. Oh. And we, oh, got, a oh, yeah. we got a 44 from the other McGee's, which and is... And the Pitums. And the Pitums. So far, they drew. Wow, so... That's funny. Pitums and McGee's, 44. Pitums and McGee's tied in second place. But that means... But that means that, that the highest store score is still is still forty six, which for goes to the Frasers. Well Good job, Frasers. Okay. You did say at the start of this that you're coming in to make amends for last week's <laughs> not so great performance, and you did just that. You came in, you took the win, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Let's go have some fajitas. Awesome efforts. Thank you all very much for coming and for taking part. It was good fun to have you all here. Very, very well done. <laughs> Hope you had fun. Remember, we've got next week, and then the final one will be on the 10th of July, which will be Isla's birthday, and maybe we'll pop a bottle of champagne to celebrate <laughs> everything. Have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Thanks again for joining us tonight, and we will see you soon. Any requests for future quizzes for next week or the week after, let us know. Otherwise, we'll see you all soon. Thanks again. Take care. Bye. Bye, guys.